Okay, D. Williams here. And today I am introducing you to, I'm so nervous. I'm introducing you to part one of my documentary. That's right. I released this documentary in 2018 and it was a really big deal then. A lot of people were supporting me along my journey. I am releasing it again here on my professional channel because this channel is changing. I have been supporting staffingpreneurs since 2013, maybe a little bit before that. And now it's time for me to expand my horizons and not just support staffingpreneurs, but support the world. And so there are a few things that I want to do a little bit differently on my channel. I really want to talk about the power of resilience. I want to talk about individual audacity, being able to push through things. I got to tell you, I be effing up. <laughs> I'm not even playing and life be life it. But um, once you get a whiff of my story, you'll get a better understanding of me and you'll understand why I keep pushing and why I keep moving. So part one of my documentary, it's called Individual Audacity. It supports my upcoming book. I hope you grab a copy of it. The link will be below when the book is available. Um, all of the different, it's nine parts to this documentary. So we broke it down because it's about three hours long. So you can watch it in each individual part. All the links will be below for each section. I'm very excited to inspire you. I'm nervous because like this is me being at my most vulnerable moment and people are very easy to judge and to make you feel like you're less than. So this is very scary to me, but I do believe that it's going to help you and someone you know. And I hope that as you watch my story and you see me now, and I got over 600 videos at the time of this recording, like I'm constantly evolving. And that's the story as well. So take a look. This is part one, um, nine part, eight more parts to go. I'm really excited. And I look forward to hearing your feedback. Please comment below, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm definitely open to hearing. And I hope that my story starts a lot of conversations in your life and your family's life. Anyway, introducing individual audacity. This is the D. Williams documentary story, part one. Um, I woke up this morning and I was fine, right? Everything was great. And I landed a new client today. Someone called me out the clear blue and told me how five years ago I impacted their lives and they're still reaping the benefits from that experience that they had with me. However, she's experienced some things that for someone who has never gone through it, is almost traumatic to hear. When I was just a child, the world was against me. When I was just a child, no one would protect me. I knew I'd be different from what the others say. I knew I would be something greater 
than what my future says. I know I fall and make mistakes. I know, I know. A few days later, we end up at another babysitter's house who we had to drive to get to. And this was also an older lady. She had a young grandson who was my age, and she had an older grandson who was about 21. And um, by this time, I was eight, and my brother was four. And she was not nice, you know? She would just say really mean things about me being a darkie. And one day, she looked at me and my brother and she said, I'm going out. She never said anything before, but this day she says, I'm going out and I'll be back in a couple of hours. You do whatever he tells you to do. He was her grandson. He was the 21-year-old grandson. And so we said, okay. And so we sat in front of the TV and we watched the Cosby show. And the grandson said, okay, y'all have to come upstairs with me now. And we had a bedroom that we slept in because of course my mom worked the night shift. So I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you knew that something wasn't right, like everything in your body like raised an alarm, but you couldn't really put your finger on it. Well, that day, even though I was eight, my alarms were going off like crazy. Why couldn't we just sit in front of the TV like we normally did? I mean, the babysitter wasn't there. You know, why do we have to go upstairs? So we walk up the steps. And it seemed like it was like a lot of steps, but we walked up the steps and he put us in this room. And the way this room was structured, it um, when you walked into the bedroom, there was a bed in the middle of the room and the wall, the main wall that was in front of the bed were dresser doors. There were dressers. They were dressers that blocked the doorway. And so she, um, he came in the room and he said, you stay talking to my little brother. And he said, but you come with me. And so I said, I don't want to come with you. And he said, didn't my grandmother tell you, you have to do what I tell you to do. And I said, yes. And he said, then you, stay, you come with me. So I came with him and he walked me into the bathroom and he said, you're gonna take all of your clothes off right now. And, you know, I don't know, everything was going through my mind at that moment. I was trying to figure out what was about to take place. I looked to my left and he was running bath water. And I looked down on the floor, it was green and white tiles. I looked up, I saw the window, I saw the toilet. And then I happened to notice myself again and I felt tears falling down my face. And all I could think of was, I think I'm about to die. I think like this is it for me. So I didn't move. I stayed very, very, very stiff. I didn't move. And he said, I told you to take off your clothes, but I didn't speak and I didn't move. I just stood there. And so he took them off for me. And as he got on his knees and took my clothes off, he stated, my grandmother told me to do this. I don't really want to do this. But my grandmother told me to do this. So he picked me up, he put me in the tub, he proceeded to wash me. And I cried. I just 
didn't cry out loud though. I didn't cry out loud. I just, um, I just felt the, the overflow of the tears flowing down my face because I knew whatever was about to happen was something that, that was going to change, you know, everything in me at that moment in time. If you think about it, generally people at the age of eight are learning uh, addition, subtraction. Um, they're, they're learning to read at a better level. Um, but at that particular place in Dee's life, she was having to navigate traumatic experiences with older people who um, were essentially taking advantage of her on a consistent basis. When, when the bath was over, he um, dried me off and he walked me to the bedroom and told me to sit on the bed and he walked out. And as I stated earlier, there was a dresser, there were two dressers that were connected that opened the, um, that connected, that, that was the in-between between the bedroom that my brother was now in and that I was in. And when he walked out that room, I started trying to figure out how to get in between those dressers. So I started banging on the dresser and I called my brother. And I started screaming my brother's name. And now he's screaming my name on the other end. And we're both banging on the dressers from each opposite end of the room, screaming, screaming, screaming. I'm help me, help me. And he says, I don't know how to get to you. The door is locked. I'm locked. I'm locked in here. The door is locked. And I said, move the dresser. And he said, I can't move the dresser. You move the dresser. And I said, I can't move the dresser. And we were screaming. And then the guy comes back in the room and he says, listen, you have to settle down. He says, you have to settle down. I don't really want to do this, but I have to do this. My grandmother said, I have to do this. And so he picks me up, he lays me on the bed and proceeds to physically assault me in every way you can possibly think of. And oh man, I screamed with everything in me. I ran, I screamed, I ran, I screamed, I ran, and I screamed. And he held me down and he continued to thrust himself on me as if I was a little rag doll. When, when the babysitter's grandson raped me, I hated him. And I hated the grandmother. And I hated my mom too. I hated the police. I hated everybody. Because I felt like I wasn't being heard. And I felt like nobody was really interested in protecting me. I felt like he got away with it. And everybody felt like that was okay. And it wasn't. And I was angry. And I'm still angry. But I'm angry because I feel like there's nothing that I can do about it. My brother banged on that door, that dresser door, crying and screaming. And I was calling him, crying and screaming. And when he was done, picked me up, walked me to the bedroom, and told me not to say a word. So I stayed with my brother and we looked at each other and we cried for about an hour or so. 
and he finally opened up the door and told us to go downstairs and sit back in front of the TV because his grandmother was coming back. And so I was so sore, I could barely sit down. So I decided not to. And when the grandmother came back, she got angry because I wouldn't sit. And um, but I didn't say anything because he told me not to. And when I went to, um, when I wouldn't sit down, you know, she kind of popped me on my butt, which hurt. And she said, "Sit down." And I was just crying and just, you know, shut up. Did it? Did it? How was it? You know, was it good? How was it? Was it good? And I said, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. You know, it was all I kept saying. And she said, never mind. And she kept going. And our, our little grandson was there by this time. And um, so I, we played, we played. I played with a little grandson and, and my brother and I played. I just walked funny because I was in pain. And um, so this particular night, my mom came and picked us up early. It was dark, but it wasn't the next morning. And um, so we get in the car and I, uh, my mom, it was like traffic on this little street. And I said, Ma, I gotta tell you something, but you're gonna be mad at me. You're gonna be angry with me. And she said, what, what is it? And I said, um, you know, uh, the babysitter's grandson, the older one? And she said, yeah. I said, he put his penis in me, his TT. He put his TT in my poo poo. That's what we called it then, TT and poo poo. And I remember her screeching, was the hearing the car screech, Err! what did you say? She turned around and looked in the back seat at me. She said, what did you just say? And I said, um, her grandson, the older one, he put his TT in my poo poo and I hurt so bad. I'm hurting, I'm hurting. And she went and I guess parked the car, I don't remember. She brought my brother and I back inside to um, this lady's house and told us to go play. And we did and then into the conversation, um, she called me back in the um, living room. She was yelling, she was screaming at the lady, angry, and the lady was screaming at her. And she said, tell me what you told me in the car. And I said, I'm gonna get in trouble. And she said, you're gonna get in trouble if you don't tell me. Tell me what you said in the car. And I said, her grandson, he put his TT in my poo poo. And she, you know, the grandmother was like, she's lying, she's a liar, that didn't happen. Oh, my mom went crazy. So they, she called the police and the police came to the house. The grandson wasn't there. Um, they told my mom to take me to the hospital and I went to the hospital and they c confirmed everything that I said. And, um, and then that was it. I began to live my life in pure fear. I decided right then and right there that my mom didn't love me and that if I was gonna protect myself, that I was gonna be the one that was gonna do it. And everything from that point in my life literally changed. My whole disposition, you know, the way I spoke to people, the way I thought about things. I was a nervous wreck for the most part. 
always looking over my shoulder in fear, always believing someone was out to hurt me. And, um, and I became a very rebellious little girl because in my mind, I was trying to figure out how to leave my mom, how to leave her. I'll never forget my uncle coming out there, driving out there in the middle of the night, riding up and down the street looking for me. And um, I would run away, I would run away. The moment I even saw somebody coming after, I would knock on random people's doors and say, can you bring me in, can you bring me in, can you bring me in? And my mom couldn't work and keep an eye on me, you know? So she moved us in. We moved again to another part of Baltimore where um, we had like family living in the house. And I think she felt like if we had family living in the house, then I, she had more control. But in all actuality, we lived in an area where I actually found more freedom, you know? I actually found, um, I created friends who were, whose parents worked as much as mine did, and, um, and they had freedom. And so there was this one young lady who, um, who had like a mark on her nose right here. She wore these big, thick glasses. So she, she used to always tell me, I'm a grown woman in a little girl's body, and I think you are too, so we're gonna be friends. And uh, we're grown women. And I said, okay, I can be grown. I don't wanna be here anyway, I can be grown. And she said, well, grown women talk to grown men. And I said, so what you, you, know, what you working with? <laughs> and um, so she told me that she had met these guys, and, um, and she wanted me to she wanted to talk. She wanted me to talk to one of them. And so we called them and they were on the phone and they talked to us. They were in their 30s. We were 11. And, um, and I established a friendship with one of them. And at this point, I was literally just out of control and just looking for um, freedom, uh, is that the best, the best word? Is looking for a way out. Many people considered her uh, uh, more mature for her age. And, uh, and she had thoughts that she, and, and beliefs that she was an adult. Uh, because in some ways she had to take on some of the responsibilities of an adult at a very early age. So, what did you think? Just got done with a piece of my life? What did you think? What are your thoughts? I want to hear everything. Share it underneath this video. I want to talk about it in the comments. I'm going to respond to every question, every thought. I'm going to respond. What are your thoughts? Like, how do you feel? I don't know. <laughs> Let's keep moving. We've got a few more parts to go. I'm on this journey with you. Thank you for watching.